Hey folks, it's Art Wolf, and welcome to Traveler Tuesday, which is re to resuming after an absence of a couple of weeks. I'm going to try and knock a couple of Traveler Tuesdays out for you before the big move that is happening in a matter of weeks. Uh, so tune in to the Monday Night Live streams if you want to hear more about that, but we're moving. That's the, 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 the TLDR on that. Today we're going to take a look at the Journal of the Traveler's Aid Society issue number seven from Mongoose Publishing. This supports their current edition, Mongoose Traveler 2nd Edition. Uh, there have been two Kickstarters, one for issues 1 through 6, one for issues 7 through 12. We have them all in hand digitally now. We have done a previous walkthrough of issues 1 through 6 before. It'll be a lot easier to digest if we tackle the issues one at a time, however, for issues 7 through 12. So that's what we're going to do. And I don't know that they're going to all be consecutively. Uh, but you can buy these now, I believe, on Mongoose's website in digital format, and you can get them... Uh, in print format with the pre-order if you did not get in on the Kickstarter. I get out on the Kickstarter, so eventually I'll get a whole set of these, but that's probably a ways away yet. So let's take a look. Okay, so we can see here, Journal of the Traveler's Aid Society, Volume 7, continuing along from the, the time-hallowed uh, JTOS from Game Designers Workshop, uh, Classic Traveler uh, by Mark Miller, of course, editors of this iteration, Matthew Sprange and Isabella Treccani Cinelli, um, and articles by a whole bunch of people. And and like the classic JTOS uh, magazine, there's going to be a lot of different kinds of stuff, adventures, patron encounters, uh, animal encounters, new aliens, all that gear, all that stuff. So let's see what's in issue seven. Now it's 130 pages, which is, I got to tell you, I'll, quite a bit longer than I expected it to be. Um, so let's take a look. These things are going to be big when they show up in... in uh, in, ah, and there's some stuff on the deep net revelation too. We do have a good table of contents, which is actually one of the weaknesses of a lot of the Mongoose Traveler second edition products specifically. Uh, I haven't, don't recall from the Mongoose Traveler first edition offhand that Tables of contents are, are not great. Um, this is better. This at least tells us where stuff is at. Uh, it's not in like this order. You'll see that the page numbers do jump around. So let's let's dive in here. All right. So we have an adventure, a week in jump, and this is actually a really great idea. Some of these might be uh, adaptations of classic JTOS articles too. I don't know that this is. This is by Peter Simon, whose name I do not recognize. Uh, but, you know, every time you jump, you spend a week in jump. What happens? I mean, you can just say, okay, you exit jump, it's a week, a week's past, and, and we'll resume our business. Uh, but if you want something to happen during that week in jump, here's an adventure. So that's actually pretty cool. And this is actually... Uh, looks like a, a little event generator with uh, D66 tables. It can tell you, here's a boring week, here's one event, two events, uh, one on the Stranger Things table, a crumpled 5,000 credit note is discovered. This is actually pretty cool, I have to say. Uh, the wrong food is stocked in the galley. Food poisoning, that's fantastic. Uh, so this looks great. I mean, I could totally see a, a whole series of nesting tables that do this exact thing. Because if you roll, I mean, if you are travelers, you're probably going to jump around a fair amount. And you probably might start to see some of these things come up more than once. So I'd probably want more of these tables. Uh, I would welcome, uh, hell, I'd buy a whole book on that, to be honest. Um, or something more like the Starship Operator's Manual from the classic uh, Digest Group publication, for example. Uh, here is a charted space entry by Christopher Griffin, whose name we should recognize. Uh, this is a planet. The planet is Asus. That's how I would pronounce that anyway. And it's my Traveler Universe in, in my Traveler Universe, so you pronounce it how you want. Uh, it is in the Depre subsector of the Trojan Reach, which I've said this before. Uh, Mongoose has supported the, so the Trojan Reach so strongly that at this point, I think uh, it is just as well supported as the classic Spinward March is setting. Now, a lot of that support does kind of revolve around the Pirates of Drinax campaign, which is highly recommended by me, but we're not going to talk about that now. We need to talk about that on its own terms. Um, so we're getting details on this planet of Asus, and I presume this is not a planet that we got in the Tro uh, Trojan Reaches book, but we're getting quite a bit of material. Uh, quite a lot of material. What's the uh, the UWP on this place? Uh, they should put the UWP right at the... There it is. But but they should put it in planetary data. Uh, so it's got a pretty good starport B, uh, tech level A, population 7 in the millions, I think that is. Millions or tens of millions. Um, so, and it is... 
uh, in the Dust Belt, which is a sort of band in the Trojan Reach. So, pretty pedestrian-looking planet, to be honest. We get a map of the... Uh, it looks like we've got some Aslan um, influence here on this planet, too, which is also pretty cool. Uh, advanced lasers for Highguard. Very good. Um, looks like these are TL9 and 10 items. Uh, I'm very interested to see this. This So, FYI... <laughs> There's a spoiler alert here, so I'll give it to you as well. This article may have minor spoilers to the Deep Knight Revelation campaign. You should skip it if you are hoping to take part in the campaign as a traveler. So this is Deep Knight Revelation character generation. I'm going to... It's a whole article on that, uh, which is frankly something that I, I feel like the actual Deep Knight Revelation uh, books needed a little more on. Uh, here is an encounter with Crazy Alien Guy from the History Channel, or so it seems. Uh, who I, I may one day cosplay as, if I if I let my hair go. Uh, here is a Golden Dawn yacht, new ship for the High Guard uh, supplement. When, when it says High Guard, that just means it's ship stuff, right? So here's the yacht, TL-12, 200 tons. Uh, probably a variation on the standard yacht. But hey, more yachts, you know. more You can't really have too many ships, so it's like monsters for D&D. &D. You really can't have too many. Uh, Central Supply, Initial 24 ar Armaments Go Cases. So these are... Um, cool little cases for your firearms, it looks like. And this stuff is TL6 and 7, pretty much. Uh, there's fancier cases for the exceptionally well-armed. Ah, very good. Here's a, a, a not new, uh, old-time traveler folks will recognize the Ithklur. They are a member of the Hive Federation, and in fact, they serve as the heavies of the Hive Federation. Uh, there was a book on them, an entire book on them, uh, back in the Traveler New Era day, and it was, let's say, uh, written to include a number of humorous elements that many people found to be out of place. So, um, and I'm not going to spoil you on that, but uh, but this is cool that the Ithklur are coming back, and that's kind of what they look like. Their uh, characteristics are 2D for strength dex, endurance, and intelligence, and EDU is 1D plus 1, uh, but they get a plus 1 to strength and endurance. Uh, res is used by, what is res? Uh, they replace social with resolve. Um... Interesting. Okay. As Hivers do. Okay, that's very interesting. We do have the Hivers uh, in the new Aliens of Charted Space books, by the way. Like gaining a resolve. That's pretty cool. Okay. Uh, encounters. I'm not going to try to pronounce that. This is an Aslan encounter by Christian Urs Wolthot. Or Wolthot. Which either one of those may be a mispronunciation. I apologize if so. Um, so here's an Aslan encounter. Here's some random dude. Lord Alf, Affel Uralod of Port Amalgo. Um, and he is social 12, so he's somebody important. Uh, this looks like a whole mini-adventure rather than just an encounter per se. Processing Ark. Ooh, it is a 465 million ton um, a planetoid craft. Uh, so, good question as to... It does have a jump drive, and it does have thrust 3. the hell is, is this? Is, even is this thing? Uh, it's only TL-10. So this is going to be interesting to read this. This is an entire asteroid refitted into a jump-capable ship. Um, and it looks like it's a Kukri uh, thing, too. That's very interesting. Okay. That it's huge, and it's Kukri makes sense, because the Kukri like big spaces. Uh, because they're cla claustrophobic. Uh, Adventure. Misadventures at Blinderby Manor by Michael Whitry. Let's see here. We've got an adventure. Looks like this is a classic traveler style adventure where it is just as much a small adventure generator as it is a, a an adventure in which everything is just uh, presented to you. That is a very classic traveler approach. Here is an article on stellar cartography, which is... Probably there's, I don't know if this is a, a, a redo of a, a Classic Traveler article or not, but certainly this topic has been discussed before. So uh, interesting that here's a shot from Traveler Map, no uh, no less. So this will be interesting to read. Content in this looks good. I'm, I'm very interested in a lot of this material. 
Um, okay, here's sectors and subsectors and all that stuff. Here's a patron encounter by Gear Laniscog, whose name I hope I'm not mispronouncing because he has now written rather, I assume it's he, has now written rather a lot of stuff, including um, the Spinward Extents book, which we already did a little flip through of. Uh, so here's a nice patron, nice well fleshed out patron encounter. For those who aren't familiar with the Traveler patron encounters, by the way, they're basically just what I described. They're basically kind of they're not adventures. They're not even adventure seeds. What they are are is you you encounter this individual who is a patron, um, and then you roll some dice, and that determines some of the details, and you're kind of, as the referee, left to riff off of the details that you've generated. This is a type of encounter that dates all the way back to Classic Traveler, and which Mongoose kind of famously misunderstood in their patron's book for Mongoose Traveler 1st Edition, but which they have revisited and, and patched up their understanding of what uh, patron encounters are supposed to do. This looks very well uh, well developed. There's a, a whole new ship in it, the Astragon Laboratory Trader, uh, which looks a lot like a lab ship, but but there it is. Uh, here's the Slow Pinnace, so it's a little different than a regular uh, lab ship, at least, which has a regular pinnace in it. Here's the Sealed Excursion Air Raft, which you might well find a use for this. The Spacers Union, the Solomani Federation of Starship Crew and Worker Unions. Uh, it's usually referred to the Spacers Union. So this is a uh, that's cool by Michael Bailey. Um, it is literally a workers union in Solomani space. That's pretty cool. Uh, you know, you can. I, I ha without reading the article, I'm getting guess that like a lot of the Solomani stuff, you can kind of choose to interpret this in a charitable or uncharitable way, and and infer good or bad union behavior based on the way you want to handle it. Um, here's another patron encounter, also by Gear Leniskog. So this one is, I'm going to guess and say it's just as well detailed as the other one. Uh, here's a Varger. Um, Central Supply Infinity Arms Energy Weapons. It looks like we got some TL-12 stuff here, st including stunners and stasers. That's pretty cool. Uh, they look a bit bulky, but, you know, that's kind of a traveler thing. That, like, laser weapons are not just magically super powerful just because they're laser weapons, which is a fairly realistic uh, way to approach it. Although I caution people, and I've said this before, Traveler has waves its hands in the direction of hard science fiction, but it is really not hard science fiction. It is space opera um, that merely has a, a, a somewhat thin veneer of hard science fiction. The Vehicle Handbook, the Iterati Space Defense System. Iterati is, of course, a planet. I forget exactly where it is. Um... Space Defense Submarine. That's very interesting. Very interesting. Light Support Submarine. Immigration in the Imperium by Tim Heiderich. Um, very interesting. So, immigrating, emigrating into the Imperium. It's very interesting. Uh, here's another patron encounter by Gear Leniskog. A lot of patron encounters here, uh, I, which is fine. I, I'm I'm delighted to uh, to have as many patron encounters. I I mean I'd buy a whole book of patron encounters, and I have more than once. The Black Zone Astro Tomb at the distant edge of Solomani Confederation space. Very interesting. Uh, where is this exactly? I mean, it says the the very edge of Solomani Confederation space. I I take that to be Rimward. Um, and, okay, I'll be very interesting, uh, it doesn't give me a sector, uh, be very interesting to find that out. So, uh, that has been all of, uh, Journal of the Traveler Day Society, Volume 7 from Mongoose Publishing. So, thanks for watching, if you have found this of interest, please let me know in the comments, and I can do, you know, Volumes 7 through 8 as time permits. Uh, in the meantime, enjoy, and, uh, you'll, of course, can order all this stuff from Mongoose if you want. I leave it up to you to, to do that if you wish to do so. Hopefully you found video useful or interesting or entertaining. If so, please do give it a thumbs up. Please do help support the channel. I'd like to give a special thanks to the patrons of Ardwolf's Lair, uh, without whom this and other types of content that we do here would simply not be possible. So thank you, patrons. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, happy traveling.